and welcome to another episode of Deeply Curious. My name is Cody Jensen, and joining me in our New York City studio apartment is podcaster, YouTuber, and writer extraordinaire, my wife, Sarah. Hello. And for the second time ever, we have a very special guest. Yep. A pro skateboarder. Yeah. A entrepreneur. Yeah, somewhat. And YouTuber. <laughs> Thank you. John Hill. What's up? It's good to be here. I like you guys. And I like your deep insightfulness. <laughs> so we, we have these deep conversations and we want to sometimes bring people onto the show that we have deep conversations with outside of the show. Yeah. And John is definitely one of those people that I have just noticed that when we're having regular conversations, you tend to think deeply about trivial things and about real things. Yeah. And that's what I like. I like tickling insight. <laughs> there we go. But before we jump into the show, first I want to let you know that the this show is sponsored by BetterHelp.com slash Jensen. And if you don't know, BetterHelp.com is an affordable private online counseling service with unlimited access to licensed therapists. So it's an online virtual, I suppose, uh, counseling service. It is super simple to sign up. You just fill out a questionnaire on their website and then you're matched with a licensed therapist. Um, you can be, again, counseling as early as that day. And you get face-to-face -face counseling, which usually costs around $150 to $250 per session. But with BetterHelp, you can be getting that same help for as affordable as $35 a week. You must be 18 years old or older to use the service, and it is not a crisis hotline. Um, there's a link in the show notes, or you can just go to betterhelp.com slash Jensen to sign up. We uh, are big advocates of mental health. Yeah. And it's not just for if you are slipping into depression. It is for everything. Even yeah. if you feel you're just in a, you know, in a good spot, it can still help you with just life goals, whatever you need. BetterHelp.com slash Jensen. That's right. So for this show, we were thinking about what should we talk to John about? And the conversation that Sarah and I were having recently was... Um, I think somebody commented on our apartment tour because in the apartment tour we feature us like walking in with our skateboards mm. and somebody commented on that video and was like something along the lines of you, you know, almost 40 years old and skateboarding. You guys need to grow almost up. Almost 40? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lol. Right. I, I like replied to that comment specifically and it was like you, you just gave yourself away as a 13 year old troll by saying that I'm 40 years old. Yeah. You have a... You, you couldn't be any older than 38, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 39. Um, so, we, but we were talking about that and talking about the notion of growing up. Right. Of the idea of, you know, what it means to grow up and telling other people to grow up and... And leaving things behind that you enjoy just because it's not adult. Right. right. You know. So keeping Peter Pan syndrome for the, your entire life. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And so we, we were like, man, we should actually do a podcast about that. And then I was like, no, we should wait to do that topic until we have John Hill on the show because... You're a pro skateboarder, right? Well, it's besides that though. It's hard to relate to because I'm a really, I'm really mature, <laughs> like in every other possible way. I'm a full yes. blown adult, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, that's like the most perfect topic ever for me because that's exactly yeah, yeah. My my entire life is basically is basically based around the idea of just being a kid. And the older I get, the more kiddish I feel. Mm -hmm. Like I started recently at 27, like watching animes that I watched when I was a kid again, <laughs> like within the last couple of weeks. So yeah, yeah. So. With being a pro skateboarder, and even if the the pro, I just throw in there because it's true. Um, yeah, but, it's technically true. Yes, <laughs> but you still you skateboard every day, so that's the main thing. Yeah. Uh, so and I guess tell me, that just in your life, like. Is that something you get often, especially putting your life on the internet? Yeah, no, I get that all the time. I used to get it. It's weird. I used to get it more until I turn a pro. Okay. Because pro, there is some sort of like validation for that. Like, oh, you right. did all that for this moment to where you can do that for a living. Right. Uh, so people like understand that more, I guess. But yeah, I got that pretty much the entirety of my life. But it just, I don't know. It doesn't mean much because that's how it works. You just look at certain things as more mature. Like mm -hmm. a professional baseball player, you wouldn't think anything of it. But a skater does seem like a more immature task because it's not as organized and there's not as much money at the end of mm. skateboarding. Um, so it's like hard to explain, but my head, it just immediately, like it t totally made sense right away where I was like, oh, well, you guys have a ton of things that could be seen as immature, but just aren't mm -hmm. based on like cultural influences and how things have worked out for you. 
but this little toy that I like to play with is just like, I don't know. I just felt okay with it, I guess, at a certain point. Probably when I hit like 16, I was like, I'm okay with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just hate the entire notion, I guess, of growing up. Like, yeah. and one thing that I, I thought of in, in that moment of like skateboarding and how there's essentially this period in your life. So you're, you're, you are under 18 mm-hmm. and you're skateboarding. Everybody's like, yeah, man, skateboarding. So rad. But then, <laughs> but then you're in your twenties and your thirties, mm-hmm. you know, or around that era of your life. And ever and people would tell you because you're skateboarding, you need to grow up. You need to go get a real job, yeah. all this stuff. But then it shifts. And yeah. if you see anybody over 50 out on the street skateboarding, you're like, bro, That's that sick. dude yeah, right, is right. sick. He's still skateboarding. He's I like 60 years old. I, I want to be him. Yeah. But you can't be him if you stop skateboarding for 30 years and then and then like you at 50, you're like, I think I'm gonna start skateboarding again. Right. Not so that you can't painful. do that. It's, right. Yeah. That's totally possible. But it's like, that's way more possible if you kept skating your whole life. And so I think it's funny that we like, glorify mm-hmm. the the o- over 50 year old skateboarding yeah we allow i suppose the like under 20 year old skateboarding right but then we like scrutinize mm-hmm. the 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 middle-aged i guess yeah. like life of, of people doing things that you know you should you should be focusing on career and getting married and having kids and all this stuff instead right. of Letting people enjoy things. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Benjamin Button effect halfway through your life to where, like, it's cute again when you yeah. start doing things. You be, I, I think as an adult, anything that you do becomes cute. Like, if you see, like, a full, like, a 70-year-old man ping-ponging his heart out, you would probably be like, that's so amazing. Yes. I love that. Yeah. That's what yeah. everyone says when they watch old people. It's, like, right. it's adorable again. Yeah. But, yeah, there's this weird middle period of life that's just, like, full optimal insecurity of human beings and that's when you have to just do things the way that you're supposed to do them i mean this goes into everything though like even at every age there's like a thing that you're supposed to be doing at the time like Mm -hmm. 17 to 19 there's a big difference of like oh you're still or you're not in college yet or like 19 to 20 right Mm -hmm. you took a year off now you're taking two years off dude that's so like you know so every i think everyone feels the pressure with certain things in life but yeah i don't know you just have to figure out for yourself what not to let go of that genuinely makes you happy. But I, kids usually don't search for that. I, I genuinely believe that most kids don't search for what makes them actually happy mm-hmm. at all. Um, I think that insight comes in way later. And that's why full-blown adults are like, man, I'm going to pick up a skateboard again, man. I'm 50 years old, dude. I got done my life. Like, mm-hmm. And I think that's where it comes when, in. When do you think people get that accent? Like around like 45, <laughs> like 48? Dude, to, I don't know. I feel like hopefully, I keep hoping that it gets younger. Okay. That people start realizing it at maybe 30 that they're like, oh. And I think that is happening because there's so many entrepreneurs who succeed at 17. There's yeah. kids who are 17 who are millionaires and they're like, well, I guess I did life. Now what? It's like they have to figure out, I guess I just have to think about what makes me happy again. But nowadays people, you can make a living doing whatever you want. So that's kind of the coolest part is like the people who have stuck with their weird quirks have ended up finding, I think the most success, especially when it's such a, weird field you're mm-hmm. definitely going to be the pioneer of that field so yeah i don't know if you're a 30 year old dude i can't even think like you're like a you dress like hello kitty and that's like your thing you love that and then at nine your mom's like maybe you should stop doing that plus you're a boy blah blah, blah. and you're like what society <laughs> yeah and you keep wearing that there's probably a job for you somewhere out there as like a hello kitty 30 year old dude is like dressing up as it so i don't know i mean you're not wrong we definitely have so many options I do think, though, I like what you said about, like, people aren't even actually thinking about what makes them happy Mm -hmm. or, like, looking at, like, okay, what is it that I actually want to do instead of, I mean, college is a good example. Everyone just goes to college and then spends four years and then gets a degree that they never use again because they didn't realize that they hated that that field. Um, I don't know. How do you... I don't know, at, at 18, yeah. when you're like not necessarily, you know, in a great mindset right, right. to make life decisions. I don't speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I kind of nailed it. No, no exactly. But I, I totally understand because the pressure, I mean, there's a ton of pressure there where it's like, yeah, when I hit, I graduated a year early, literally so I could skate for a year before yeah. I went to college. So I was like, I'm going to get all my classes out the way, blah, blah, blah. And I was actually a really good student. I did whatever. Kids or kids like me. <laughs> Teachers like me. Kids like me, too. I was really popular. No, that's not true. I and skated. gosh darn it, people liked me. <laughs> they loved me. <laughs> um, but now I graduated early, and I just just escaped. And then I also have, I have like, a military dad and a Korean mom. So it was kind of like, hey, you know what's next. Just go to college. 
And I was like, yeah, for sure. And then a year later, I was like, hey, you guys mind if I get another year? I'm kind of good at this. And you just kind of give, like for me, I did see a future somewhat. I could kind of see the finish line. And I think it, I, I don't, this, this conversation is really hard for me because sometimes I want to say like, it's important to see where you could possibly succeed in it. Mm-hmm. Like if there is something there, but then at the same time, people don't do that and they succeed. So I don't know. I, I, if I ever gave advice, I would give advice and try to have somewhat of a North star to mm-hmm. head to. And with skating, it's really easy. It's like with me, I, I didn't grow up around, you know, crazy flaunting or whatever. And I always thought it was silly. So I didn't have this mindset of, you know what I really need in life? A mansion and like 10 Ferraris. Um, now I want that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I never saw that. I never saw that at all growing up. So I was like, you know what I really want in life? To live in a van and to be able to skate 24 seven. So work a minimum wage job and do that. That was like my dream as a kid mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to be a pirate. So <laughs> yeah. those two things, it's like, th- that's always what I want to do. So my expectations are really low. So it's really easy for me to be like, what do I need to do to make that happen? Get a minimum wage job. And I did. I just did minimum wage jobs and skated all the time. But I also, the North Star was like to be a pro skater. Right. And like see how far I could take that and and just kind of skate contests and see where I could make money where I could. And, you know, I knew that it could be somewhat lucrative if you were kind of popular and you could sort of work with like shoe brands and stuff like that. Anyways, Mm -hmm. so as I was going through that process, I realized that it wasn't a lucrative field. But when I moved out to California, you need more money to live. And I was like, okay, here's like the adult part of life. But I also, through skating, actually learned how to like work hard for something. I mean, you know, to learn anything takes so many hours of dedication. I mean, I think that even with like people who play video games sometimes, they work really hard to get to the end and they put in the process. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's not physically exerting, but you, you know, with these things that people think are silly and don't really teach you real life skills, like video games truly teach life skills because you're literally accomplishing as you go. I don't play video games at all. Yeah. So I'm sort of speaking on my brother, trying to make him seem like a better person <laughs> playing video games all the time. I think, but I think that that's true though. Like you should follow your curiosities and your right. habits or your um, hobbies. Right. And then usually if you pay attention to those when you're young, they turn into what you love when you're older. Yes. And yeah, my point though with hard work is like, yes, you have to, but you do have to be someone who understands hard work. You have to be someone yes. who gets it. Like if, if you are someone who really likes let's say Dragon Ball Z. And maybe your mentality as a kid is like, it would be cool to make a show like Dragon Ball Z. That's a huge North Star. That's actually a very lucrative field to be able to make a show, but it's like a hellish process. And it does feel like you're being a kid because maybe by the time you're 40, you're finally getting the show put out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great goal. But if you're also someone who's like, I love Dragon Ball, so I want to spend all my time watching the show until I'm 30, nothing's going to happen because you don't get the essence of going out there and getting yours so if you are someone who wants to pursue skateboarding like i did you know i i was picked on not not in a bad way like oh look at that loser but my friends would make fun of me for being someone who was so like let's go out right now i just bought a generator and lights let's go out at night in the morning in the afternoon and film and skate all day every single day and they're like ah you're i don't know they thought i was like so psycho about it and then i was like we're moving to california tomorrow like when we decided to move it, it, I think, was a week before we did. Wow. And it was just like, hey, we should move to California. And I was like, if we're going to talk about this, we're moving, like, in a few days. And they're like, yo, but I have to pack up and stuff. So we left a week later, moved to California. Nobody had money. So we just went to California, got on food stamps, and did the whole thing. Sorry for anyone who gets offended by that. <laughs> uh, it was very temporary. Sorry, government. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, but the mindset was like, Take advantage of the opportunities that you get. You have to realize that if you do want to be in a creative field, a weird field that is might seem immature to the vast, um, you have to work really hard at that and be exceptionally good at it so that people are surprised when they see you doing it. Mm-hmm. My um, question, I guess, on this whole thing that we've been talking about and the opinion is, does it even matter if it leads to success? like what is the problem with staying a kid I suppose or Mm -hmm. like I mean I I guess we could just throw the whole idea of like growing up out and just say just doing things that you enjoy right like I will never be a a professional skateboarder because I do not have that dream right but I do love skating right like and I do like boosted boarding and I do like those things they energize me and I just have fun doing them Mm -hmm. but it's always going to be a hobby Right. And it's always going to be a hobby that some people see as childish. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and it's never going to be something that makes me successful. Like, right. so uh, more so like, does it matter if there are things that we love doing or want to do that we spend a lot of time doing that isn't our North star or isn't leading to success? No, it doesn't matter, but very little matters. <laughs> I mean, in the grand scheme of things, no, I mean, I, yeah, like my, my whole point with that was basically since I knew I wanted to do it for a living, I had that North Star, right. but of course I had other hobbies. You know, yeah. I played the guitar a little bit. And it's like, I didn't want to be a professional rock star, but it was fun to have a second hobby. It isn't important to have the North Star. And I think in the grand scheme of things, it's the definition of success to you as well. It's like, what do you mm-hmm. consider success? And, you know, I, I don't think success in any way. I mean, the margins that we live by sort of as Americans is so skewed in the grand yeah. scheme of things anyway. So like our version of success is being like, wealthy in america so like let's say making six figures is like our definition of success that's insane Mm -hmm. like you know that that thing i told you where thirty two thousand or like thirty two thousand five hundred is the uh you're if you make more than that you're in the one percent of the entire world right which is so insane so to think like your version of success is making three times already what puts you in the one percent of richest people on the planet is a kind of a psychotic goal but that is sort of just like the goal in America. And I think like, I actually think going backwards in that and trying to figure out, that that's also why I put so much emphasis on the things that make me happy in the moment. So like if I started playing with ceramics and I was like, oh my God, I'm so obsessed with this, so much fun. It's really important to dive down that because the version of success is keeping yourself as excited as possible, as often mm-hmm. as possible. So really, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you love skating and you go skate and in that moment it makes you feel alive and excited, then that's a very powerful thing that a lot of people don't ever have. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people don't understand what it's like to really get excited very often. And then they feel good again when they watch a show, but they feel guilty because they're wasting their time. And it's like, well, maybe there's something there in watching that show that makes you feel excited that you should hang on to. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it seems like the overall vibe, at least of America, is like it's really, it's hard. It's like hard to exist here, which is really strange because we have so much. Mm -hmm. So it's not really strange. If you if you like reverse psychology a lot, like like, was it, (laughs) then you realize that, yeah, having more than enough, I mean, it has its issues. And I I noticed this most when I watched like this North Korean documentary Mm. about a guy who survived North Korea. And like if you hear his stories, basically his parents were killed in front of him. I mean, the craziest things possible. He was tortured like terribly to where. He's double jointed unintentionally because they would hold him up like a pig, you know, and it like basically ripped all his ligaments and stuff. He survived, got out of North Korea, and like as he was escaping with someone, like climbed over an electric fence, and this other dude got under him, and that dude got shocked to death, and he used, you know, whatever, crazy. But in the documentary, he talked about how it's harder living here, which is really strange. But he lived in South Korea, which is basically the same thing. Like the governments work the same. Somewhat. And, um, <laughs> don't at me. It, yeah, don't at me. It feels the same, like, being there and being here. A lot of freedom. They're Western of, cultures. Right, very Western culture. And he was, like, the whole race for money and, like, the pressure mm-hmm. that people put on you to, uh, like, make a living doing things that, you know, when you're yeah. going past survival, um, he said it was harder for him. I could see that. I mean, obviously, I don't know what it's like to be from North Korea, but um, information overload, option overload. Mm-hmm. And, like, I feel like our generation has the problem of, like, there's t- too many options, hmm. and so we're scared to pick one. Um, I feel like it's maybe the same with um, just enjoying what you enjoy. There's so many things that we don't even know what to choose to try to enjoy. Right. Like we have no idea how to even start that process. Also, America puts a lot of emphasis on work. Yeah. And, and only doing things that will further your career. So if you think of it like that... I mean, playing guitar isn't going to further your career necessarily. Right. So why would you even yeah, I mean, bother I, with it? I have that same, I, I do have that mentality. And sometimes I try to break it down where it's like, you know, you know, if you watch anything and you watch Gary Vee talk about what you have to do to succeed, it's inspiring and fun in the moment. Like when you sit, you're like, oh, cool. So if I work hard, I can get whatever I want out of life. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's, you, you kind of do have to go deeper question, deeper question, deeper question each time. Like, oh, what do I want out of life? Oh, do I want, and if you think of the end goal, like a lot of people, if you ask them, what do you want? They don't know. Mm -hmm. Like most people don't know what they want at the end. They can think of like one small thing. Oh, like I'd like to have this job, but that's, it's really easy and should be asked. Why? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to be a doctor? I was like, oh, I want to help people. It makes me feel better about myself. But most people wouldn't say that. Most people don't know that the things and the wants and what makes us happy, blah, 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 are these things that kind of sound cheesy in the end of things. It's like, oh, I just want people to accept me. 
which is usually the kind of the end result. It's because on the Haslow's is it Mas- Maslow's, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, needing to be accepted is up there with like food. Right. Mm-hmm. It's super high on there and down there with food. Down there, thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, it's down there with food, and it's like, and people don't want to believe that there's someone who kind of cares what people think. And I think to an extent, you know, that that's a hard thing. Maybe you don't care what the normal people think. Maybe you just care what your heroes think. Maybe you just care what your inspirations think. But deep down, we all very much want to be accepted, and that's kind of the biggest thing with yeah humanity. I think that that's the thing with everything that we've talked about so far. I think the, the I think the entire like idea of you need to grow up and the people actually stop doing that thing is because they ha- are fearful or they are insecure in who they are and they can't stand up to those voices in their head and say like I don't care that you think that I'm a child for doing this it makes me happy I'm going to continue doing it and the people who are telling that person to grow up probably have that idea because they were told that it is childish for them to do the things that make them happy, and so now they have to make others unhappy because they felt that's the cycle of life and what needs to actually happen. And just like the success and everything that we're talking about, I think almost all of it, especially in America, Mm -hmm. stems back to the fear of image, the fear of man. I, I think that we are driven... Even the success that we choose to go to, like the reason we, you know, want the mansion and the nine Lamborghinis is because somebody else has seven Lamborghinis exactly. and a smaller mansion. And right. it's like you want to have that image that's higher than them. And I think why, like for us, Sarah and I, it, it the, the, it's we define our love, our success, and we feel successful right now, even though we're sitting in our three hundred square foot apartment. And like in New York City, right in New York right. City, and we don't own cars, and like none of that like matters. Like even this doesn't make me happy. Right. Like the, what makes me happy is knowing you mm-hmm. and having the freedom to be sitting here at. We, we text each other, and like we could have picked literally any time on any day. Yeah. Because we're free. Right. Like freedom is my definition definition of success, and it doesn't matter if I'm making thirty two thousand five hundred dollars or if I'm making. $32 million, at the end of the day, my success is based on my freedom. I agree. And I think with me that it's totally freedom, but the, also the freedom to do anything that excites me in the moment. And mm-hmm. that's why it's important to tackle the things. And maybe that's why I was able to do it more down the line. And maybe that's why right now I'm watching Dragon Ball Z in the middle of the day. It's because it's like, yeah, you, I, I fight for the time to be able to do what I want, which does, for me, at least require some work. And that is a luxury. Like, that's mm-hmm. the thing. It's like, that is a luxury to be able to do what you want. I mean, I say that, but there's a lot of places in other countries where, you know, they fight for the bare essentials. And with those essentials, after that, that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. They hang out all day. Um, I don't know. There was just basically this story, and, like, I can tell in, like, two seconds. The, like, Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Work Week, where a guy was, like, by the water fishing. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, and a businessman walks up who, you know, used to be an investor or whatever. I don't know. He just made, made millions of dollars and basically talked to him. and was like, hey, dude, I could, I could grow this so big for you. And he's like, what do you do right now? And he's like, oh, I play the guitar, but then I work, and then I go to the city and play guitar with my friends, and then I fish, you know, whatever. And he was like, okay, well, I can tell you how to expand this. He's like, oh, then what do I do? And he's like, oh, dude, you move to California, you do this, you grow the business, it'll take maybe eight years most, and then you're set for life, 10 years, whatever. And he's like, what do I do at the end? He's like, dude, then you have all the time, you can just go fishing, you can go play guitar. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> that's usually what it is. It's funny that, yeah, that whole moment leading from that to that, is like America. Yeah. You know, it, it's basically our lives are just like convinced that we need to do this crazy, torturous work to get what we had at the beginning. Yeah. And that's almost, I think, what people, sometimes I believe that life is just spent trying to get what you had when you were a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After a certain age. And that's so insane to me. And I feel like during that process, you can still be that kid. If you're going to be that there again eventually, if it's going to be cute to skate at 50, you can just go through the process and do the fun thing that makes you excited as a kid because it'll probably always make you excited. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and a lot of times when you think something's lame or cheesy, you're like, I don't know, it's not really for me anymore. You have to think, like, is it really not for you? Or did one of your friends say, I don't really like Dragon Ball Z? And you're like, me neither, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's whack. Yeah, yeah, I was totally thinking the same thing yeah, as dude. you press pause on the TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like on the phone. Yeah. Mute. <laughs> yeah. There's actually um, an author that I read, and she talks about this, like, when you're going through kind of like most people have a career crisis, you know, it's the doctor who's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be a photographer now. And like they just totally like switch whatever. You have like this major career crisis. Um, she talks about that 
and she was like, the, the way to find like what you need to do now is to go back to when you were a kid. Like ask people who, who you were when you were young. What did you do? What were your hobbies? Um, all of that stuff and use that to find your new career. That's beautiful. And I totally agree. And I actually heard a quote the other day that was just like that, that made me like shake in my boots. And it was a guy said the same thing where he said, anytime I get confused on what to do in life, I go back and read my favorite children's novel, which was Peter Pan. Yeah. And he's like, and once I read that somewhere in that book lies the secret to not only your happiness, but what you need to do Mm -hmm. in life in general to be excited. Yeah. It touches me deeply, my friend. <laughs> Anyways, but that's also why I explore other things that, like right now, especially, I think it's about exploring the things that made me happy overall as a kid. And that's kind of the avenue I want to go down. And that's why, like, I've made a career out of making videos about skateboarding and stuff. And, you know, I, but I will say, I still feel the temptation. I know kids out there who are 18 and 17 still feel like, yeah, but bro, I, it's going to be weird if I go to school with a Hello Kitty backpack, even though I love it with a passion. It's like, I, I still get that there's that pressure. When you're a kid, it's right. even more yeah. for some reason. Yeah. But it's all culture that has taught you that. Mm-hmm. And you also don't have to be that kid. You don't have to be the kid that sort of goes along for the ride. And I understand that it's difficult. But I think a lot of times we don't yeah. teach. Res- like I, pe- People can take responsibility. Mm-hmm. And, I th- and I think a big thing in America is that we're... S- this is hard to say because I, I don't want to say anything dangerous. But sometimes we teach that taking responsibility is actually less on us like it's almost less important to take responsibility for your actions because sometimes the world just sucks and things aren't fair is what people say i actually think we have a lot of responsibility on our own to do whatever we want so if you want to be if you want to feel confident in society in general it's kind of on you to do that yeah i think that is a good spot to take a quick break and let you know about our second sponsor that is audible.com you can go to audible.codyjensen.com and sign up for a free trial and pick out a Free book to listen to if I was to give you a suggestion. Uh, maybe John has a suggestion. He's list- he, We were talking about this before the show. He's actually listening to a book currently. But my suggestion would be to download A Darker Shade of Magic. It's a trilogy series that I have physically been reading with my eyeballs. But I am sure that the audiobook is um, just as good because I'm pretty sure... Don't quote me on this because I only looked at it for like three seconds. But I'm pretty sure the author actually reads the book, nice. um, which I always love. That quote's by Cody Jensen, you yes. said? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you want to download a free audiobook of your choice, just go to audible.codyjensen.com. John? If you are someone who is truly deeply curious, I would recommend the book Sapiens, my friend. That one is it's very insightful. It's basically about how humans came to be humans and the deep psychological issues of how we are. It basically treats humans as if we were inspecting animals. Mm, like nice. looking at us very animalistic and being like, oh, this is why they are how they are. So it's very interesting. So if you want to understand the deep of us, get past the ego and sort of understand the core, it's a good book. Nice. Cool. Sweet. Audible.com slash, no, audible.codyjensen.com. Um, <laughs> quote me on that. Um, uh, so jumping back into the conversation, the I was having this thought of just recently somebody was talking to us I, I it was in the comments um i was i was trying not to say in the comments because the person may actually listen to this mm. uh, but I'm, i don't remember their name so if this was you sorry um, well you said it <laughs> um take responsibility yes take responsibility for your actions um but they you know they they commented and said why don't you guys like well essentially because we haven't quote unquote, made it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, And we aren't like, you know, making a ton of money. And basically, essentially, because we are not paying our bills with, you know, this podcast and doing YouTube videos, they're like, why don't you guys like cut back on making videos and just make like one video a week or maybe one video every two weeks um, and and get nine to fives while you guys are still young enough to be able to, you know, work and make money and do all this stuff. Was it said with slight or was he just kind of wondering? I mean, I don't think it was malicious. Oh, right. I think it was more. It was more like a mom being concerned, right? That kind of vibe. Which is still pretty annoying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, I I was just thinking about that, and I, I responded um, with just the fact that you would never like say that to somebody who is in a normal job, 
who is who is a entrepreneur and they are creating this you know app or maybe they're tra- creating this clothing line or whatever they're doing you opened a store it's a right. it's a traditional field and right. they they're an entrepreneur and they're on the ground floor and they are working their butt off trying to get this thing done and they're working significantly more hours than like 40 hours a week mm-hmm. um, building this business and it is you know in, in any business including a YouTube business there is the high possibility that you're going to fail but you are guaranteed to fail if you go get a regular job and work at it on the side. All right. Um, and so right now it's like we are in that um, kind of a time of, of, of our entrepreneurial you know, spot of working significantly, like working way harder than what we would work if we were on a nine to five job and making significantly less money than if we were having a nine to five job. But the risk reward situation of if we succeed we will one live our dream right we will two hopefully be making as much or more money than what we would do in a you know typical nine to five job um but the most important thing is that if we succeed we're now living our dream like we did what we what we're wanting to do and not only are we living i guess the north star goal we're living our dream working towards our dream right um so the reason that i was thing in that is because I it brought up the idea whenever you were talking about like skateboarding and how like if you aren't skateboarding you know working towards a career or once once you became pro mm-hmm. it was um like yeah. justified or yeah. you know I can't remember the exact word you said but right. and I was thinking that's the exact same with almost everything yeah. with like with a YouTube job or with any other job in the moments before success everybody is is like scrutinizing you Mm -hmm. or they are you know telling you why don't you go get a real job why don't you grow up why do you like keep doing this thing um and but then like essentially they would somebody would say that to me because i am not paying my bills with youtube but they wouldn't say that to you because you are like quote unquote a successful youtuber right like you have reached the threshold now where your full-time income is made from being a YouTuber. Right. And so it's like, why my, I don't know. I essentially, I guess I'm just throwing it out there as a conversation of it. It does that stem as well from like people being insecure with themselves, with what people think of each other That's and it. things like that. Like, yeah, it's, it's all on the people who insult. It has nothing to do with, I mean, it has nothing to do with us pursuing mm-hmm. our goals and trying to reach. I mean, there's, there's a lot of admiration for people who do things that society will be like, Oh, that's silly. But also, how silly is it that you're a part of this expression that we use, society will say. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're part of that expression, that sucks for you. You shouldn't be, you mm-hmm. should, yeah, like, you shouldn't be in the norm, especially, I mean, like, it's fine to be in the norm if it's whatever, but if it's negative. Mm-hmm. Like, it's negative to be hateful and spiteful, and it's also very common, and it's what most people do. So why are you being a part of that? It's silly, and it's all based on insecurity. At the end of the day, it's all based on ego in general. Like almost everything that we do is based on like humans have crazy egos, and that's why I don't. That's why we have to talk so much and figure out why mm. we're so insane <laughs> and why we're so cruel and crazy. And I think I think a lot of people just they stop thinking about that. They don't want to think about why they're cruel or why they're terrible, and they don't even think that they are. I think a lot mm. of times, but yeah, if you're someone who insults someone pursuing a dream, it's ridiculous. And at the end of the day, I mean, think about all your favorite heroes and all the people that you probably look up to, and like the people I look up to. In the moment, if they were telling me, like Tim Ferriss, if he didn't have a stable job and he's like, I'm writing a book, I would I would say, what does that even mean? That's mm-hmm. You can't make any money doing that. That's not a career move. Mm-hmm. And he became, you know, multimillionaire from that one book or made, you know, millions and millions and millions. And that's how, like, you know, the guy making the Pokemon game. I'm making a game right now. I don't know. It's silly. And you also don't have any context on where they are in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no reason to ever insult someone who's pursuing something that seems silly. I think if yeah. anything, it's admirable. If anyone says, I'm doing this thing, and you're like, that's weird. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's a good sign. If what you're doing yeah. is weird, it's a good sign. Yeah, I mean... Quote him on that. <laughs> if what you're doing is weird, it's a good sign, dash John Hill. And yeah, a dollar each time you use it is fine. <laughs> Submit it down below at audible.com slash Cody Jensen. <laughs> Is that right? No. Audible.codyjensen.com. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> or betterhelp.com slash Jensen. Yes, yeah. better <laughs> um, I was just going to say, like, you think of the people who, like, 
majorly shifted the way we live. Like Steve Jobs, like if he had gone to college, (laughs) you know, or, or he said, oh, hey, I'm going to make this like music player that you carry around with you. Like, yeah, that you can't even comprehend that, you know? Yeah. And I think with people like him, it's exciting and fun. And the way that maybe we should be, if people doubt you, I'm sure he was not even mean about it. I'm sure he, in his head, the person no longer existed. Right. Because someone's like, oh, what are you doing? That's stupid. He'd be like, peace. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right. Yeah. You know, like he doesn't even, it doesn't even register. As, I, and I think because he's dead. Because that too, yeah. it's really hard to think about too things soon. when you're dead. dead. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, too um, soon. it's been hard for me at least <laughs> since I've been dead. But yeah, that's that's sort of the avenue you should go down. Is I mean, there's two battles you have to fight. You have to fight the dude in yourself who's going to be insecure yeah. about things, and then there's also the dudes who are going to doubt you. And the dudes who are doubt you, there's enough quotes out there you can look up. What do I say to the haters? Just look those up and stare at those every day. Yeah, <laughs> there's no, there really is no real reason to feel insecure even though we all do when people mm-hmm. insult us especially if you're excited about this passion that you're going down especially right. if it's something that could lead and you know it could lead to something that you think will make you happy at the end there's yeah. no reason to even listen or care at all even if i mean even people who are successful will hate sometimes which is weird usually they're not yeah. successful usually if it's someone who's successful it's someone who's just jealous and you're scaring them mm-hmm. and that's yeah. like that's a good sign too yeah, it's like what Kanye says. I don't take advice from people who are less successful than me. Does so he say he, that? So he doesn't take advice from anybody. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and dude, oh my God, some some other YouTuber said that the other day, and he got hell for it because he's not Kanye West. That's the problem. He's actually just a very nice, gentle giant. He's the guy who created Fairly Odd Parents. Oh, nice. So oh. I was watching his YouTube channel a lot, and I was like, this is awesome. And then he got into some drama where basically all he did is get like half dislikes now. Which is really sad because when I, it basically came from a couple of like commentary, negative commentary videos on mm. YouTube. Which, by the way, YouTube promotes those channels and like, oh, people want to watch it too. Negative yeah. commentary is drama sells, dude. Drama it sells. does. Makes me sad. It's I mean, that's why uh, two really famous YouTubers just had a boxing match. They did. That everybody paid ten dollars for. So, yeah. including your yeah, boy, I didn't pay ten dollars, <laughs> but my girlfriend did, and I watched. Um, but yeah, it's very silly. Silly platform. Yeah. Anyways, but what I was saying about that guy, yeah. Um, he said that he doesn't listen to the critics. He's like, oh, I don't really pay attention to critics unless you're an artist and I don't really want your advice about art, especially because the dude created Fairly Odd Parents mm-hmm. yeah. and Danny Phantom and like a bunch of shows. Clearly ultra successful. He actually has a really popular YouTube channel where they're very YouTubey. He's like, oh, I'm drawing Wanda as the Black Panther or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, he does stuff like that and it actually does really well. It does nice. it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Kills the game, and people will be like, "Wow, this dude's career is over. Like he used to be this big guy who did this, and now he's just a successful YouTuber, which almost every other company can't seem to achieve." Mm-hmm. So I'm like, this one dude, you know him, mm-hmm. and a lot of people know him, and the only reason you do is because he's successful. You know, or in this world, whatever, mm-hmm. he's successful in that, and you can't probably can't think of anybody else who's made any cartoon that you grew up watching. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. And that's what makes me sad. It's like, yeah, in that aspect, he shouldn't listen to any of you. Why would he? Mm-hmm. And you guys, and and honestly, why do you take advice from critics? If they're not good at the thing that you need advice in, then I don't trust their opinion. I don't trust people's opinion, you know, in skateboarding, who they have, they don't skate. And they're mm-hmm. like, dude, maybe you should try this instead. Maybe you should do this. I'm like, I, I don't even understand why you, it's, I call them sideline skaters. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing as people who go to sports games, mm-hmm. who yell at the football player, like, have you ever heard of defense? It's like, the dude's literally been playing. So, like, And you don't play. How could you possibly... He's heard know? of it. He just doesn't remember it because of the eight concussions. Exactly. Exactly. It's been beat out of his system. But I always... I feel so silly. I've been with friends at... I don't know if I've actually ever been to a sports game, so I might be just creating this scenario. But I think I've been to a baseball game. And yeah, and like people around me were just like, oh my gosh, like that dude sucks. Mm-hmm. I'm like, does he? Because mm-hmm. this is like college baseball or it's like whatever the professional baseball is. I don't yeah. even know what it is. Uh, MLB. MLB, yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin Luther. No. Yeah. Um, nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Uh, yeah, exactly. But they're giving advice to people. It's like there's no reason in the world that someone playing the game should listen to sideline skaters or sideline people. Yeah. yeah. I think that is like that. Re- that is like what saddens me the most about this kind of conversation is just when people – are not allowing other people to enjoy things because somebody didn't let them enjoy things. And that we should live in a world where 
if the Fairly Odd Parents excites you and makes you happy, then you should be able to do that thing without critics. Right. And like you should be able to to like essentially follow your heart and do the things um, that make like energize you mm-hmm. and make you happy and listen to the music that you want to listen to right. and not be swayed by societal pressures or peer pressure or or whatever it is into following the mainstream and only listening listening to the the hot new hip hop artist um, because that's what everybody is talking about even though you actually like Garth Brooks like. Right. And there should be, I just hate that like everybody is like, I don't know, like chiseled down to the, the like bare, you know, I don't know, like facade of, of like what the world is supposed to be Mm -hmm. instead of them allowing them to build themselves how like they want to be and allowed to be weird. Like, yeah, well it's sad. I mean, it's sad because as a kid, you pretty much are the most pure and you haven't figured out the best and then Mm -hmm. boom, it gets beat out of you. I mean, the perfect example is one time I was driving And I saw this little kid running across the street. So I aimed at him, right? And I hit him with my car. 2,000 points. Yeah, 2,000 points. That didn't happen. But this little kid was running across the street. And then his dad is walking super slowly behind him. And I'm like, your kid is smarter than you. Like your kid, whatever your kid Mm -hmm. loses from being you has been chiseled out of you. You have this weird ego thing that allows you to be like, not I'm like the alpha. I'm walking across the street and these cars are going to have to slow down. And I'm like, and your kid is the smart one running across not wanting to disrupt the flow of how people work. You don't want to make anything, you don't want to make it inconvenient for anyone else. Mm-hmm. And that's that pureness of that kid, get, by the time that kid is 16, he's not going to be that way. He's not going to be running across the street. He's going to be walking slowly right. because his parents are going to teach him that. And that's the same with anything. Though. That's uh, racism and you know any type of discrimination is completely taught. Right. Mm-hmm. You don't grow up anyways. But um, yeah, it's like they, they're, there's a story or study or something. I don't know if this is scientific or just uh, like a, a story. Um, but it, anyways, it's like if you go into a second grade class um, and you, you know, ask all of the second graders, like, how many of you are artists? Almost every single one of them raise their hand. But then if you go into a sixth grade class, maybe like 50% of them raise their hand if you ask, are you an artist? And then by the time you get to high school, it's a very, very few of them like raise their hand and say they're an artist. And so at some point, all of us are artists, all of us are creative, all of us have these things that we have inside of us that we want to get out and we want to color and we want to get outside the lines and we want to do all this stuff. But our systems, our society, like beats that out of us and, and until the point where only a few originals, if you want to say, get out of that system and say like i'm still an artist regardless of what you say to me like i'm still gonna do this Mm -hmm. like your test your like things that you say i need to fall in line with like i reject that and i'm still an artist and like i I guess essentially the reason it's all comes around to it's just sad like i don't have a solution yeah it's just sad that that's where we're at right i read this book um where he he was talking about that and he was saying like um our parents' generation? Or no, the Industrial Revolution. Mm. Um, he was saying, like, Amer- what America needed was, like, assembly line, nine-to-five desk. Like, you come in, you do your work, you go home, that kind of situation. He said, but now we're in a spot where we need um, creativity and we need, like, innovation and we need, you know, all these things to push us forward, but we're still stuck right. with the systems from the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. And so it's constructed us out of it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's built us not to be successful now. Right. And that's the problem when when I try to explain to people who are going to college, my friend was like, I'm going to college for photography. And sorry if you're somebody who's going to college for photography. But I was like, oh, that's a really bad idea. (laughs) Because all (laughs) all they're going to teach you is literally what they've, that teacher is going to teach you what she teaches every other student and everyone else in the class. Mm -hmm. You're going to shoot photos the way that you need to to pass all the tests, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to go for a photo shoot and they're just going to say, do you have photos I can look at? You're like, yeah, look at these. And they're going to be like, these look exactly like everyone else who submitted anything today. Mm -hmm. And then the one kid who shoots like, you know, under things or like upside down from space. Mm -hmm. Because it's pretty easy to get up there sometimes. (laughs) Um, Well, I mean, it's flat. Right, exactly. All you have to do is like jump high enough. 100%. But that's what like I actually submitted a thing where I was like looking for photographers willing to hire for some work. And the only people that I was interested in were like these quirky things where there's all these wedding photographers. And I was like, you know, it looks like you were taught this and it looks like you're really good at this. 
but it just doesn't feel different. Mm -hmm. And so no one will ever look at my brand and think anything differently. They're gonna be like, oh, this looks just like everything else I saw. And that's the thing, when you're, you just gotta get out of the flow of what everyone else is doing and school is the epitome of teaching you that. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was listening to a podcast the other day and it was with the guy who wrote the book originals. Um, and Adam I, Grant. Um, Adam Grant. And that would actually be a really good future fo- podcast uh, topic. I'll go and, uh, write that on the list, um, just originals <laughs> in, in general. But um, what he was saying in the, in the podcast was that the, the most creative people, the people who tend to get the jobs or whatever, are people who don't have an expertise, like going, like wanting to be a photographer, going to school for photography, and then making it happen. Not that that isn't a valid path in order to do what you want to do, but typically the people who succeed are the ones that have a wide breadth of knowledge. It's like it's, jack of all trades versus yes, master of one. Yes, and a jack of all trades, they can be more successful, not because like they can get into any field they want to. It's not about that. It's about that. The photographer, this guy, he, instead of going to, being a, wanting to be a photographer, going to school for photography, wanting to be a photographer and going to school for painting, mm-hmm. wanting to be a photographer and going to school in business and in engineering and whatever it is, mm-hmm. just like taking classes, not, that's not a advice for what you should do. I'm just giving an example that if he did that, he could learn photography anywhere. I mean... The photography knowledge is come on one YouTube. of the most taught things on YouTube. Like right. you can you can learn photography and how to shoot something for free, but maybe you can't get the business skills that a lot of these other photographers um, d- don't have. So you come out of this knowing how to take photos, but also knowing how to build a great business. Right. You know how to take photos, but you know how to take photos in this weird and interesting way because you're pulling these threads of knowledge that you got from your painting degree, from your engineering degree, from hanging out with um, people of different um, cultures than you, from traveling the world. Mm -hmm. And you're pulling, you know, these weird, you're like, man, I I really like this, this shot. And it reminds me of this thing that I saw whenever I was traveling through Asia. And then you, you know, figure out a way to actually shoot that because you're like, actually, whenever I was studying um, calculus, there was like this thing that, you know, mm-hmm. reminded me of this other thing. And like, you put these things together, right? That's when you create something original. That's whenever you're like stepping outside of the box. And essentially it goes back to the Steve Jobs conversation of even like that famous commercial that they came out with of here's to the crazy ones. Here's to the ones who break the status quo. Here's to the ones who are original essentially. Right. Mm-hmm. And those people are the ones who didn't listen to society and they pulled different pieces of knowledge from different seemingly unconnected you know right. things right yeah and I, I honestly think that is one of the things that um is a factor in my success is because i have i i have all this weird life experience because of the way i grew up um mm-hmm. and because I am a deeply curious person, and as a child, I just followed every whim and whimsy into like just learning things. I just wanted to learn things, and then I think that that is a driving factor for you as well. Just at, maybe you recognize it, um, but I definitely recognize it from the outside. Just knowing how curious and how like interested you get into one skateboarding. But then if you want to learn drawing, you actually do it. If mm-hmm. you are really interested about, um, you know, a piece of architecture in New York, you look up the Wikipedia page and you read the whole thing. Right. Like, and, and then on top of that, building businesses, bringing in collaborators and like bringing in all of these different things. And so whenever you make your YouTube videos about skateboarding, it's not about, it's not a YouTube video about skateboarding. It's a, it's a youtube video based in skateboarding with this wide breadth of knowledge that you bring to it that make, makes it unique makes it original to even the skateboarding space which you know contributes to your success and stepping outside of the the norm of today we're going to play skate right mm-hmm. today we're going to build a skate contraption and then see if we can still play skate you know right. it's like there are all these like weird and quirky things that i think that only come from stepping outside of societal norms and stepping outside of a one track mastermind like Mm -hmm. plan yeah well i appreciate that i mean you have to live a story to tell a story right doesn't so yeah i mean 
everyone and everyone does. That's what's so funny is everyone lives these very unique lives. And that experience that you li- get from living is mm-hmm. going to be so much more beneficial than anything else that we say society a lot. So we probably need to think of a different word. <laughs> taco sauce. <laughs> anything that taco sauce is going to throw your way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes it confusing though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, your experiences are going to be way more important than that. That's the most education you can get. And then traveling, of course, is like the most education you can possibly get. And I know it seems like a luxury, but talk to Bobby, living with Bobby. You can travel for very little, a lot cheaper than you can mm-hmm. than it takes to pay for college. You can travel the world. Um, and that, I think, is the best education. I think learning about other people and sort of dis- learning about yourself and sort of trying to dismiss your ego is actually the best chance you have at becoming ultra successful in today's society because I actually think we sort of uh, taco sauce because <laughs> I think sometimes I think it's getting worse sometimes I think we're promoting more of the idea of getting into these things and being part of just like this factory line mm-hmm. I think we're pushing that more and you know people are seeing like the college thing that's going away a little bit where people are like oh maybe you shouldn't go maybe it is a better idea not to go um, but it lies in other things I mean mm-hmm. our biggest uh, inspiration our biggest change to culture comes from media mm-hmm. and then it seems like the highest numbers and the biggest things in media are sort of pushing the same agenda. And that itself is creating a bunch of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I mean, all the the most pop- popular music ever teaches us to want the most money possible and want more than everyone else. It actually teaches us to be more egotistical, mm-hmm. which is scary. I mean, it's literally, it's just teaching society how to be more of itself and be more of the cruelty of what humans naturally are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, that, the thing about that book, Sapiens, that I think is the most interesting, it basically just talks about how the reason that we are that way, the reason humans are cruel, the reason we, we all have the essence of being terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could be. You know what I mean? I mean, I, you know, at the time when Hitler was Hitler, people followed him. Mm-hmm. They, didn't, they weren't like, that guy's insane. Now we say that, of course, because we know it's insane. But at the time, they were like, this is normal. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm deeply curious in 30 years wondering what they're going to say about us. Or not in 30 years, you know, in 100 years. They're mm-hmm. going to be like, I can't believe those guys did that. They're mm-hmm. psychopaths. They didn't know that was wrong mm-hmm. at the time. I don't know what that is, but I mean, I think in I think not even in a hundred. I think in the thirty year mark, the, we're gonna look back at the Trump era. Yeah, right. and I mean, people already the world already questioned outside of America. The world yeah. already questions like how could they vote Trump Obviously. in after yeah. knowing A B C D E F G X like, <laughs> like everything. Yeah, more like outfits. how could they possibly vote him in knowing all of these things? Yeah, and then like possibly we could even be talking about how could they vote for him again? Like, yeah. Oh, we're not you know. talking about that. <laughs> and, well, and, well, and it's like, I'm sure a lot of the things that we eat, like I'm sure sh- the way we oh, are yeah. with sugar, oh, yes. people are probably going to be like, oh, yeah. you guys are insane. Why were you doing that? Or the way we are with plastics, the way we are with like destroying habitats. And I mean, yeah. right now we're the most destructive that uh, human civilization has ever been mm-hmm. because we have the most tools finally. So right now, unfortunately, this is the time period, at least if it started improving now, we would be seen as the worst civilization of all time. Yeah. Because we're the most destructive by far. Right. We've we've taken most of the planet for our own. We've destroyed so many ocean homes, blah, blah, blah. I can go on and on, mm-hmm. but that's like preachy, I know. But it's just it, but it's just being aware. I mean, that's humans are very cruel. We're yeah. very, very cruel. And I mean, a lot of people just think it becomes it's it's sort of like the insecurity of us being able to do what we do. By, but not being the dominant creature. Do you know what I mean? They, mm-hmm. Like, we, we see other animals as stronger and tougher and whatever, so we do anything we can to maintain our position, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't stop. We just don't know how to stop. And that, that transcends into every human being thinking they need to protect their zone and that nobody can have a piece of it and they need to be selfish and they need to grow up with that ego. And that's, that's sort of the poison of everything is that we are cruel by nature because of our insecurity of just living peacefully and happy with everyone else. It's Which crazy. seems so counterintuitive. It does. Like, doesn't it sound better just to live peacefully and happily? <laughs> it sounds that way, but then, but then our comparison, our ego is just like right. It's so crazy. Like we we want to spend our whole lives accomplishing something, and since we're so pampered and we have everything, the only thing we see next is like, oh, the only thing to accomplish is just to have more than what that person has. Right. right. So we all play that game of we need more. I mean, I play it every day. I, like I'm I'm so in that game. It's insane. Um, but I think the more you can pull yourself out of it, the more happy you'll be overall, actually, yeah. the more excited you'll be. I think that's the thing. It, like, hopefully, like if you are listening to this and you were, you know, possibly looking for something to take away from it, my like advice, I guess, or just so whatever it is, like if you're listening and that you find yourself seeing other people, seeing other people do something that you say like, that's weird. 
Um, I why are they doing that? Maybe instead of questioning why they are doing something that is weird or different, question look look inward and be- become more self aware in why you are feeling that way. Are you feeling that way because you're stuck in a nine to five job and you actually are not happy with the life that, um, for a different word than society, um, you know, a, a group of people living in community who put pressures on each other, um, <laughs> uh, um, you know, that, that you're doing that not because that's what you want to do and you're just living, you know, this, this path that maybe you didn't choose, but was laid out for you. And I think that Sarah and I talk about this a lot, especially on this podcast, that self-awareness is is like the the most important thing like becoming self-aware in not only who you are that is very important but secondly becoming self-aware in why mm-hmm. you are why you are doing the things that you're doing and you know I would I would venture to guess and I can be wrong with a vast majority of you but I would venture to guess that the reason you feel certain ways towards other people is not because of that person, but because of something that you are stuck in or that was said to you or that has been like done in your life. And so now it's easier to call everybody else weird and easier to say that these people who are trying to step outside of of societal norms are the weird ones. Um, It's easier to do that than to say, I'm not happy. Right. I don't want to do this. Um, and take the hard and necessary steps to say like, I actually would rather make less money and go move to the southern tip of France and paint landscapes. That's what genuinely makes me happy. And you're, and then, and then something stops you because like, well, I'm married. Well, I have two kids and I have to provide for them. And all of those are like valid excuses. This is coming from somebody without kids, but it's like... <laughs> Um, I still feel like even though they are valid excuses, they're still excuses because if you wanted to, you could. Yeah. Like, or if you had to. We're right. going to kill your kid if you don't do this. Yeah. You could do it. That's true. Like, <laughs> you know, as, uh, you know, as hard as that decision is, ultimately, I think if you look at things like that, it, it's not if you, you know, want to. It's like if it was life or death, could it, could it work? And at the end of the day, would you be more, you know, happy? I don't know what the answer is for anybody else but me. But for me, I would rather live on the verge of poverty, doing what I love to do, being free from the minutia of a nine to five schedule, than, you know, be, I don't know, go work for some company, agency, finance firm, and giving my life away to somebody else's goals, you know, for 40 plus hours a week and not being able to truly live out what I feel like is my God given like talents and ex in potential, mm-hmm. um, like, and make a million dollars. Like there's no amount of money that would make me want to live that life. I also think it's fair to say that if you do just want a nine to five, that's totally fine too. But as long as you're not doing it right. just because that's what you do. Like if you want a nine to five, so you have more family time, that's fine. You go do that, but don't like crush anybody else's spirit because it's right. different than what yeah. you're doing. I think that's like, like one of my my soapboxes is like I I legitimately do not care what anybody else does. I just don't want you to do anything because somebody else tells you to. Right. Yeah. Like if if you want to carry your skateboard around by the trucks, then freaking do it. <laughs> yeah, do Don't it. worry about everybody at the skate park saying, mall grab, like, who who cares? If your skateboard has two wheels on a handlebar, <laughs> ride that skateboard. <laughs> exactly. It's like, I. it's just like, that. that's my thing, is I really wish everybody could be like me. <laughs> that would be because, a scary world. Yes. <laughs> I, it, I agree, though. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Because you have, I, I bet there's a lot of times you wake up, you're like, and you, the thing you feel guiltiest about is that other people can't feel how you feel. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah. It's like, sometimes I feel like, man, I'm sad for everybody else for not being me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Society sucks if it's less like me. No, but I mean, I, I, I do sometimes think like, you know, sometimes happiness achieved, unless it's some deep chemical imbalance, happiness can be achieved with a mindset change. Mm-hmm. And that's oh, such a simple sure. grasp. Like a mindset change is 
right there. You know, a Ferrari is really far away. So maybe not the Ferrari. Mindset changes right there and you can be happy. And my my words, three words that I always live by is be less Hitler. Mm, but really I should probably good. change that to be less Nazi. Because uh, Nazis mm. follow Hitler. Yeah. Right? But Nazis are also people who follow blindly, which a lot of us do. Yeah. We're not killing people. But, but I mean, Don't there's... speak for yourself. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of bad can result from yeah. just blindly following and... I don't know, there's a lot of happiness. I actually have a really good story of, of blindly following. Um, whenever I, This is like a story that has stuck with me, and I'm very grateful that I w- happened to have teachers that were like this, but I was in high school. We're sitting in the lunchroom, and one of my dumb friends, because we're all dumb when we're in high school, but just decided to... <laughs> I don't even know what was going through his head. He's sitting there with his plate of food. He grabs something that was on his plate, and he just... Okay, yeah, I threw it, took a pickle um, and just chunked it across the uh, room because there was a glass kind of case and mm-hmm. it just like stuck <laughs> right to the case and slide yeah. down. Um, but the principal of the school saw the whole thing. Nice. Um, and he uh, walks right up to him and he's like, you know, bro. <laughs> What? Why? A pickle? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Um, and he like is is you know trying to excuse himself, whatever. But then he's like finally, okay, okay, I'll go get the pickle. Um, so he like gets up, he goes and gets it, and the principal, um, he starts to. I wish I could remember the words he said in this moment, but I can't. But he he started to lecture my friend a little bit about why he shouldn't do that, mm-hmm. and in that moment, I. I kind of laughed and I just like, essentially I disagreed with what the principal was saying. Hmm. Like, because he was, I don't, I really wish I could remember what he was saying, but in some way I disagreed with what he was saying. And, um, I laughed a little bit and the principal looked at me and he goes, I mean, do you think that's funny? And I was like, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're, you're totally right. And he was like, no, He's like, if you disagree with me, you need to say it. Do not blindly follow me just because I'm the principal of this school. Interesting. He's like, if you have a different opinion than what I am stating, you need to say it. And he's like, say it. And so I told him like why I thought he was wrong. And he was like, good for you. And he walked away. Really? Yeah. I like this guy. And I was like, just that, you know, I, it, that was just a story to go along with what you were saying. Like, perfect. but I, I, I really love that. Like. I was happened to have, you know, that experience and like have yeah. leaders that were willing to say like, just because I'm your quote unquote leader yeah. doesn't mean that you all blindly follow me. I'm right. just here, you know, as a, as a beacon, but you can take your own like path and have an, have your own brain. Right. I mean, and things become more obvious too. I mean, like as, as you know, we've aged America, things become more obvious. So right now, like the whole Nazi thing I was saying is like, yes, obviously it's not bad to discriminate. Jews aren't less people, so we probably shouldn't kill them all type thing. But they didn't know that. Right. And then recently, black people aren't less people. Right. So, and and, and that's, those problems are so obvious now. Mm-hmm. But the thing with hating and discriminating and insulting people's tasks or what they're into, it's a close line. It's a close line to discriminating against something that just exists, mm-hmm. something that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. You know, there's the gay marriage thing. I mean, it, it's like, it's mm-hmm. constant where there's like constant judging and discriminating against these things. And at the end of the day, the more that you do that, if you're someone who just hates on something that really didn't affect your life mm-hmm. and really isn't seen as something super destructive, then you're sort of just following that lineage. Mm-hmm. Right. So for all the haters, you're yeah. a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> you're literally a Nazi. <laughs> just live and let live. Yeah. Um, That's what I always say. And I mean, I think my my new biggest thing, and I didn't come up with this. I read it somewhere and it really stuck with me and it's kind of becoming a thing, I suppose, is just let people enjoy things. Like it, people are, you know, there's just a lot of internet hate and a lot of comments that come through on just different people's things who, you know, th- they lo- really like a movie. They really like a song. They really like whatever. And people like want to comment and be like, you are awful. This movie is terrible. And it's like, if it doesn't personally affect your life, yeah. just let people enjoy things. The Laurel thing was a perfect explanation. People were actually angry at other people yeah. for hearing a different word when it was like Laurel and whatever the other one Yanni. was. Yanni. Yanni. People were actually angry. Yeah. There are people who are like, if you hear this, you are unintelligent. 
So I'm dumb. Like, yeah. Um, so I think that is a good spot to wrap up um, the conversation. Um, thank you, John Hill. Of course, dude. Um, you know what I'm going to do right after this, honestly? What's that? I'm going to go to audible.codyjensen.com, get myself a book, and I might, you know what? I need to talk to someone recently. So I might just hit up. What was it called again? BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com. Dude, I can't believe how much Jensen. cheaper it is. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That's what's insane. That's why I might do that. So Yeah. I, I really wanted to bring up BetterHelp.com slash Jensen while John was on the show because I've Thank just you. noticed right. that. This is my intervention. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. That there's a lot, a lot, a lot of things that um, you need to talk about. Intervention was a bad was a bad word for it because you know what? Do it, guys. Regardless. Mm-hmm. You're not even if you're not doing something bad. How does that work? Anyways, yeah. yeah. We were talking to somebody yesterday about mental health and she said the thing that people don't realize about like we all have mental health. She mm-hmm. was like, people just kind of assume that means like you're in this really bad state or you're wildly depressed or whatever. She was like, but we all mental health is something that everybody has and you just have to take care of it. Just yeah. like you take care of your physical body. Which so. most people don't do, aka yeah. me, at all. Yeah. I yeah. can't remember the last time I've been to a doctor. I don't know if I've ever been to a doctor. <laughs> I honestly am the same. Right. I'm sure my mom birthed me on a pack of hay on the boat on the way here. Like, this This is legitimate. The, the last time I remember going to a doctor was in junior high, whenever I broke my collarbone. Same. Not jun- Wait. Yeah, when I hurt my knee skateboarding. I was probably 21-ish. And I was still on my dad's thing because he was in the military. And I was like, this is going to last forever. But now I'm really, really old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've aged out of it. Well, that's the thing. All you have to do is just like lick things a lot. Yeah. And you inoculate yourself to anything that would possibly be an issue. Yeah. You know what? To an extent, I actually agree with you. Maybe not the licking part. Oh, no. But the, the licking's key. It has to come has to, to the licking? tongue. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. I usually just <laughs> put my eyeballs against it. But, but I never get sick. And I think it's because I'm such a disgusting person. I, I touch everything and I put my face in everything. I eat food off the floor. Like As funny as that possibly is, I 100% agree. Like yeah. I really do think that I the product of growing up in a pre-internet mm-hmm. um, era where I actually was outside and I was actually getting my hands in all kinds actually of things. Actually eating dirt. Right, <laughs> actually eating all this stuff. I think that I'm actually immune to. I, I have taken in the uh, germs to be able to produce Everything the antibodies. You could possibly take in. I have. Yeah. I actually have. Yeah. yeah. I'm still very disgusting. <laughs> like every. Well, in New York, I find myself half the time lying on the ground. Like if I get tired, I lay on the ground face forward. All my chest and my face is just on the ground, and then I can feel my tongue hit the ground sometimes. And I'm like, I still lick New York ground. Wow. So I haven't gone that far. Um, I did sit and gum on the ground yesterday, though. You did. I did. Well, there you go. Yeah. Whoever. And she sick, takes in most of her germs through her butt. So sitting, <laughs> it, sitting right. on the gum really helped. Yeah. Okay. I remember that one time I caught you just peeing into your own mouth. And I was like, dude. Well, see, what I was trying to do is I was trying to see if I could pee without hands. Got it. And as soon as I started, the stream was so strong. You didn't realize it how went, excited you were. Whoosh, right into my face. Oh, okay. And then I was like, oh, it tastes good. Nice. Yeah. All right. Remember that. <laughs> so, on that note. Yeah. On that note, we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. Um, <laughs> if you uh, you know want to sponsor the show, <laughs> hit me up. Hit, hit us up. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, on behalf of myself, my wife mm-hmm. Sarah, and John, where where can they find you? If oh, you links in description. Mm-hmm. I would say just follow Progress Daily, the YouTube channel, because we're about to film something for that as well, and that's when I'll be putting a lot of effort on that I feel like you guys might be more interested in. But there's also my YouTube channel where I skateboard a lot. Yeah, just really fun. just Google John Hill. And you'll find thousands of them. <laughs> yeah, I've made a lot of videos <laughs> in my day. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, that's the end of the show. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye.